Hello friends, welcome to Joe Newton online class. In this class, I want us to discuss this topic on the board, which is a topic in physics. And that topic is machines. The topic is machines. Now, what is a machine? Now, let's look at the concepts we are going to discuss on that machine. We have definition of machine, types and examples of machines, mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, efficiency, and types of lever. The next class, we delve into calculations. Now, what is a machine? Very simple. A machine is essentially any device or tool which allows the effort applied at one point to overcome a resisting force known as load at the other point. So a machine is any device or tool that allows the force applied at one point, that is the effort, to overcome a resisting force known as load at the other point. By so doing, a machine is important in the sense that it makes work easy and also saves time and what energy. Now, the next, what we what are the types and examples of machines? Examples of machines include the pair of scissors we use in cutting materials. We have the screw jack, these are types of machine. We have the, the lever. Under the lever, we are just still discuss the classes and orders of lever. Then we have the pulley system. Then we have the wheel and axle. Then we have the inclined plane used for rolling up material um, objects, heavy objects, maybe from the ground with inclined plane, inclined object like plank onto a platform or a lorry. We have the pulley used for lifting heavy load with wheels that has the pulley circular wheels. That's a pulley system with rope in its design. Then we have the uh, screw jack. We need to use the screw jack in lifting vehicles that can be found in mechanical workshops. So we have uh, even the gear system. The gear is a machine. So these are types of machines. So now we have the wheel and axle, which can be used to draw water from deep well. The wheel and axle having circular, it has a cylindrical wheel and axle for drawing water with help of droop mechanically from a well. So these are examples of and types of machines. Then we find machines in virtually everything we do. We use machine in virtually everything we do in our offices, at home, in industry, we have machines. Then we have the complex machines anywhere, made up of aggregate of simple machines. But in this case, we are, we are focusing on simple machines. Now, the next we have here is mechanical advantage. There are three basic terms used for describing machines or associated with what? Machines. These three basic terms or concepts are mechanical advantage, the velocity ratio of machine, and the word efficiency of a machine. Now, what do we mean by mechanical advantage of a machine? By mechanical advantage of a machine, we mean the ratio of the word of the load to the applied effort. So the mechanical advantage of a machine is defined as the ratio of the load to the effort applied. Therefore, mathematically or analytically, mechanical advantage, MA, is equal to load over effort applied. So this gives you mechanical advantage of a machine. Okay, then it has no unit. So this is the formula for calculating mechanical advantage of a machine. It has no unit because load is in Newton, effort is in Newton, and Newton cancel Newton, there will be no unit. Now let's look at another concept, velocity ratio. What do we mean by velocity ratio of a machine? The velocity ratio of, the velocity ratio of any machine is defined as the ratio of the distance moved by effort to the distance moved by load. Note, it is not ratio of effort to load, as some people think. It is not an opposite concept of this. It is a different concept in mechanical system. So the velocity ratio of a machine is defined as the ratio of the distance moved by effort to the distance moved by load. Therefore, it is the ratio of effort distance to load distance. And of course, it depends on the geometry 
of the world machine that the moving parts of the machine why the mechanical advantage depends on the friction in the system of the machine that is the mechanical advantage it is influenced by friction in the mechanical system okay now velocity ratio from this definition the formula is given by vr is equal to effort distance effort distance over load distance effort distance over load distance so that gives you the vr the velocity ratio of a machine is equal to effort distance over load distance and of course it has no unit too then the next concept the next term associated with machine is what we call the efficiency as the term implies when we talk about efficiency of any system we mean the extent of its productivity or its effectiveness that is efficiency which means the efficiency of a machine is defined as the ratio of its work output to the work input expressed as a percentage the efficiency of a machine or any mechanical system of a device is defined as the ratio of the work output of the machine to the work input into the machine expressed as a percentage in other words in terms of mechanical advantage and velocity ratio, we can also define efficiency of a machine as the ratio of the mechanical advantage to the velocity ratio expressed as a percentage. Okay, which means the efficiency of the machine, efficiency is equal to work, work input over work, sorry, work output over work input times 100% in express in percentage. So the work output over work input times 100%, that's the work input means the work done by the machine. That the work output, that the work of load, work done by the machine. Then the work input is the work done by the effort, that is effort times effort distance. You know, work is defined as the product of force and distance move in the direction of the world, force. So the work output is the work of the load. It, in other words, it is load times load distance. Okay, express in percentage. Or we can give efficiency to be equal to mechanical advantage over the velocity ratio times 100%. So in other words, efficiency is also given as mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100 word percent. So that's it. That can also give you the efficiency of a machine mathematically or by calculation take note of this formula because we are going to use this formula in calculation in our next class okay the next concept there is what we call we types of lever we were, let us look at lever as one of the machines it's very important now in lever as a machine lever sim is simply one of the simple machines and the lever has three orders we have three orders and the examples or devices involved in these orders of lever. In lever, it is described as the orders are described based on the arrangement of the moving parts of the machine or the working parts of the machines. Now, in the lever system, in the lever system, in the lever system, we have the first order lever. The first order. In the first order lever, the arrangement is this way. It is arranged in such a way that they have the effort, they have the fulcrum, they have the load. So in the first order lever, the fulcrum is in between the effort and load. That is the arrangement of the first order lever or first class order what lever. Examples of machines under first class order lever include the pair of scissors you know. We have the claw hammer used by the carpenter in wood workshop. So we have the pliers. All these are examples and many other devices that fall under first order what lever. Okay, okay. Well, we have to second order lever. So here the first order, this is the arrangement for the first order. We can put it this way. This is the arrangement of first order lever. Here, here is the effort. Here is the fulcrum. Here is the load. Okay, second order. In the second order lever, in second order lever arrangement, we notice that the load is in between the effort and fulcrum. So here we have effort, load, and fulcrum. 
That's the arrangement of second order level. The load is in between the effort and fulcrum in the arrangement of in the mechanical arrangement of the devices or machines, such machines. Example or a typical example of second order level device is the wheelbarrow. The wheelbarrow used in carrying materials. That's the wheelbarrow. In the wheelbarrow, you notice that the handle is the word, the effort. In fact, in machines, where the handle, the part we hold, we hold our hand to apply effort, to apply force, stands for the effort. We are the part that carries the work out, stands for the load. Then the fixed part of between the load and the fixed part is what the fulcrum, the supporting part of the machine is the word, the fulcrum. So in the wheelbarrow, the well. The wheel part is the fulcrum, while the load carriage space is the, the carriage space is the load, then we have the handle is the effort. So the arrangement could be like this. The arrangement could be like this. We have the we have the load. We have the load here. We have our effort here. We have the load. And here is our fulcrum. Then for the third order lever, the third order. We have the third order lever. For the third order lever. The arrangement is simple. You can deduce it from what has from the foregoing. So the third order level has the arrangement that the effort is in between the load and fulcrum. So we have the load, effort, and fulcrum. That is the third order class level. In that third order class level, the effort is in between the load and fulcrum in its mechanical arrangement. Examples of device that is that fall under third order level include the human forearm, our forearm. For under the third order lever because the effort is in between the load here and the word fulcrum supporting fulcrum. Then another example is the faucet used the elaborated tongue used for holding hot object. Uh, um, fall under this category of machines. The laboratory tongs used for holding hot objects. It has its um, distance load and has the word the effort at the center. Then the fulcrum at the other point end point. So the arrangement could be like this by diagram. We have our effort at the center. We have our we have our uh, effort at the center. We have our load here, and we have our fulcrum here as well. So that is the using diagrammatic uh, schematic. Uh, diagram arrangement. So these are about lever. Now, finally, let us quickly look at velocity ratios of some machines, because the velocity ratio is not common for all the machines. Some machines or devices have their particular velocity ratio depending on the geometry or the working parts of the machine. Examples. Let's look at velocity ratio of some machines like this. Velocity ratio of some machines. Okay. So we have velocity ratios of machines. Of machines. Now, example for a pulley system, for pulleys, for pulleys, the velocity ratio, the velocity ratio depends on the number of pulleys, number of pulleys. So, for pulley, the velocity ratio of any pulley system depends on the number of pulleys that the wheels, the wheels. If it has two wheels, the velocity ratio is two. If it has three wheels, the velocity ratio is what? Three. Simple. Then let's look at inclined plane. Inclined plane. For inclined plane, the velocity ratio for inclined plane is given as 1 over sine theta. 1 over sine theta. Inclined plane is something like this. It is like a right angle triangle in each arrangement. So the velocity ratio of a climb plane is 1 over sine theta, a device in this arrangement. That's the climb plane. So the velocity ratio of an inclined plane is 1 over what? Sine theta or sine theta inverse. Okay, then let's look at the velocity ratio for uh, wheel and axle. For wheel and axle. For wheel and axle. The velocity ratio for wheel and axle is given by... VR is given by the that is we have the ratio of the big cylinder because in will and also it, it turns as it lifts water or lifts object with the rope. It turns it has two big cylinders and which will give you two pi r over two pi r. 
That is, the circumference of the big cylinder, the wheel, is the what? Where the effort is. Then the circumference of the small cylinder is where the axle is. So that the axle is where the load part is, the moving part of the load. So for that reason, and the formula for the circumference of a circle, because make a circular part as it moves, is 2 pi r over 2 pi r here. When you cancel out, we are left with what? Big r over small r. Where big r is the radius of the wheel, small r is the radius of the word axle. Don't forget that when you are given diameter, then the radius is diameter divided by 2. So the velocity ratio of wheel and axle is the radius of the wheel over radius of word axle. That big r over small r. Good. Then, remember, velocity ratios have what? Velocity ratio also have no unit. Okay. Now, let's all look at another device like the screw jack. Screw jack. The screw jack used in lifting object. For the screw jack, it has the pitch and it has the tummy bar, like the length of arm. I don't mean the hydraulic jack, I mean the screw jack. As you are turning the tummy, tummy bar, it is making a circumference movement, a circular movement. And the pitch, which is a threaded pitch, will be lifting up. As it is lifting up, it can now jack a, moving, a, 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 a stationary vehicle for work to be done under. So for that reason, the velocity ratio of screw jack is given by the, uh, we have the 2 pi r, which is the effort distance over the pitch, the pitch, which is the, the, the distance in the threadings of the what, the screw jack. So let us, so look at this. So these are some simple machines and they are what, velocity ratios. So, which we should mind the formula because we are going to apply them in subsequent class for calculations. Thank you so much for paying attention to this particular class. I know by now you have known what to mean by simple machines, the mechanical advantage, the velocity ratio, the efficiency. And don't forget that the efficiency of any machine is affected by what? Friction. Because that is the, because of this reason, we say that efficiency of any practical machine or working machine is less than 100% because of the word influence of friction. In other words, to increase the mechanical advantage or the efficiency of any machine, what you need to do is to do what? To reduce friction. You do what? You reduce friction by applying what? Lubricants or lubrication method using grease, oil, and so on. That's why we use grease, oil, and other lubricants in machines, in the moving parts of the machines, to do what? To reduce friction and increase its efficiency and mechanical advantage. Thank you so much. We have seen the velocity ratios of certain machines. Thank you for paying attention to this class. And uh, I believe you have learned something. Do not forget to visit my YouTube channel at Joe Newton Online Class. Subscribe to enjoy my mathematical videos or lectures and the physics as well. Also, Join me, follow me on my Facebook page, all at Jonuto Online Class, even on TikTok and Instagram.